Hey, hey everyone, welcome to Watch Complications. Links to my website, watchcomplications.com, and my Instagram are in the description below. Hit that subscribe button if you want to stay updated on what's going on with the channel and the bell if you want updates. I have a review video for you today. We're going to be looking at a watch by the name of Etienne. Eaton, not particularly sure how to pronounce it, but it's a new micro brand out of Singapore and they have a CNC guilloche enamel style dial that's pretty unique. I said yes to taking a look at it. I'll have all my thoughts, pros and cons, uh, the good and the bad about this particular watch. And yeah, I'll give you a quick little peek here as I typically do before we get into the specifics on the watch. I'll give you all the specs and we'll take an up close look at it. I will put photos of the watch throughout. This thing looks different. I have no idea what that's looking like in front of the light, uh, the way I've got the camera set up right now, but we will get a good look at this front and back and talk all the details on this Eaton T01 in the emerald green. They also have a ruby red. I encourage you, please put your thoughts, comments, opinions, insight into the comments below. I love interacting with people on the channel and you're gonna typically hear back from me, you know, a thumbs up or some response. So please add comments if you feel like you've got something to add to the conversation. Of course, keep it respectful. Wrist check for today, I am wearing, again, it just rarely leaves my wrist at this point. I wear it probably four to five days a week or at some point during a day that on that many days per week is my Christopher Ward C63 Sealander GMT in the polar white. I like this watch so much and I've worn it so much it's blown all my other watches out of the water. I went ahead and also bought the green which they just released the green ombre dial C63 Sealander GMT and I am going to do a review of this watch and compare the two models. I'm looking forward to it. I have four straps that go between these two. It's such a good basic design that I just have a hard time taking it off at this point. And I was watching some other YouTube videos the other day and I, is anyone else getting irritated by seeing uh, watch channels or reviews where they review a watch but they don't actually have the watch in possession or they've never actually seen it or held it. They're just like, I'm pulling pictures from here and there and they're finding things, stock photos on the websites or photos from other people and feeding those into the video and the transitions and stuff and they're commenting on it. Okay, you can comment on things visually and okay, I think that looks good, I think it looks bad. But beyond that, I really don't want much commentary on the watch unless you've actually looked at it, seen it. So at Watch Complications here, you get the real deal. Watches I review, I look at, I have had in my possession, I look at them, I consider the watchmaking aspects of them, like we're going to talk about the Flinke dial today on this ETN watch. People like being entertained, I understand that. But also just consider subscribing to channels, not just mine, but channels generally where people have some insight, know what they're talking about a little bit more, have seen the watches, are in this for the right reason, um, and are true enthusiasts and not just out to make a buck or something like that. You get the real deal here, so stick with me and you're gonna get some good content. Just as a short aside, and I know I do that sometimes, but if you enjoyed my recent Monty Python Silly Walks watch mod video, I actually bought product to build four or five of these, which I'm selling. I have names written down for them, but I will probably do maybe one more video where I show the movement going into the new cases that have sapphire crystal instead of the mineral crystal, but the movement is the same size dimensions. It's a Miyota movement, it's the 6T28 instead of the 6T33. The 6T33 movement is a hand-wound movement, but those don't exist, they're not on the market anymore. They're, they're not on eBay, they're not in distributors, they're nowhere. Uh, but I was able to get some 6028s, which is a silver version automatic of the movement, which is a little bit of a different look, a little bit unique, and they look really good. So I'll probably show a short video on that. That was such an enjoyable mod series, and I've got other complete custom watch builds coming that I'm gonna show you that I've made in the past. Uh, six months or so. I just got too much content to cover. I'm trying to get to it. I've got a Rolex video coming up, all kinds of stuff. Just but for now, let's look at the Etienne T01 in emerald green. The box for this watch comes bubble wrapped in this in the delivery package. Kind of your typical, you know, fold this out. There's your watch box. You can see they've used a, a wood of some sort and they've laser etched the name of the brand into this. This whole thing pops out, so let me do that. All right, there's the box. You can see a couple hinges there on the back. It's 
held together with magnets in the top, you can see, here we go, see? It came vacuum wrapped, so there's this plastic container, uh, vacuum sealed, which was interesting. I'm assuming that they would all come that way. And then we have a basic felt in the interior with some straps to help hold the watch in place. So that's all there was to the packaging. Like I said in the intro, I'm not particularly sure on the pronunciation, Etienne or Etienne, but we'll just call it the ET. This is the emerald green, also comes in a ruby red. I'll say more about those two colors here in a little bit. I will do my best to give this lighting and positions where you can get a sense of the color. It reflects a lot of light. It looks better in person than on a camera just because of the way the dial is made, which is with this engine turned look with this translucent enamel on top. And typically, I would jump right into the specs first and then talk pros and cons. What I wanna do in this video is first focus on the dial and the technique used to create dial because hey, I'm also a slash watchmaking channel and that's the interesting aspect about this watch. Then we'll talk specs and pros and cons a little bit. And what they say on the website about this watch is quote, the dials handcrafted with CNC engine turned guilloche pattern and covered with multiple layers of transparent colored enamel, end quote. Now guilloche is using a machine which moves in particular patterns to essentially carve a, a design into a dial, usually used with precious metal dials like of gold or silver, but could also be used on other types of metals. Typically when you see a replica or a type of guilloche pattern on a dial these days, if it's a lower end kind of watch, they're typically stamped. So you get a mold made and then that comes down with several hundred tons of pressure on dial blanks and essentially punches the pattern into a dial blank. Of course, in the modern era, we've got CNC machines and that's what's been used to create the pattern on the dial blank for this. So in the description, the first sentence or two, there's a couple mentions of guilloche and then they call this, at the end of the day, it's a flinke enamel dial. So I wanna distinguish between those two terms. Basically what you have is a hand operated machine that is carving the patterns into the dial and the operator is a highly skilled watchmaker operating the machine in a particular way so that the desired effect is achieved but you're operating directly on the dial blank when you're doing a guilloche dial. A guilloche dials, if they are done by hand on a machine by a highly skilled watchmaker, we're talking about a very high defect rate and very high quality watchmakers making very small runs or one-off sorts of dials. But if you wanna up the manufacturing capability of doing these intricate engine turn dial designs, Flinke is a route you can go. It was sort of initially practice established by someone named Peter Fabergé. And what we're doing here is instead of directly carving out the design into every dial blank individually, it's carving that design into a mold and then taking the mold and stamping out again with tons of pressure. You have your dial blanks and stamping that guilloche pattern or design into the dial blanks. So it's a little bit more of a mass manufactured approach to these sophisticated dial designs that we're talking about. Now what makes this unique is it's a type of enamel. So it's not just the manufacturing process, we're talking about taking these stamped dial designs and covering them with layers of enamel so that it gives that engine turn effect a whole new look. And that's what we've got here, except it's not done with molds. It's not done with stamping. It's not done on an actual uh, machine where it's hand uh, made and engine turned by hand. We're talking about something that's been done with a CNC machine. So we have essentially a router type of a tool. I don't know if my audience generally is familiar with CNC machines, but we're talking about a computerized uh, environment, a computerized machine that's carving out the particular pattern. So if you're reading information about a watch like this or you're looking on eBay other places and looking at dials that have a guilloche style patterns, they might be stamped, they might be something like this where it's CNC'd, but what makes a flinke enamel dial different than just your typical stamped one is that you have multiple layers of this enamel on top of it, which brings out aspects of that engine turn design. So I'm not sure if in the description it's a conflation of terms or what the exact situation might be, 
I don't think they've CNC'd a mold and then they're using that mold to stamp all of the dials. Maybe that's what they're talking about. Or if every dial blank is individually CNC'd and then the enamel is put on top. Regardless, that's what we've got. A dial that's based on a CNC'd engine turned Giyoshi style pattern. And then we have the multiple layers on top of it with the enamel that's then fired, which brings out that design, which was originally carved into the blank. You can see this particular pattern is a spiral of sorts, sort of a fanning out of these arcs. And when it comes to Flinke enamel dials, there are a few companies on the higher end of watchmaking that do this sort of work. Uh, Cartier has some, Ulysses Nadan, Black Pond. They make dials in this traditional method. In fact, Ulysses Nadan has a good page that distinguishes between different types of uh, guilloche type patterns and enameling and what those different terms mean and how they're applied in terms of watchmaking when it comes to enamel dials, which they've got a long established tradition in. So I'll link that in the description below. Take a look at that. Gives you some context, I think, for the conversation if you're interested in that watchmaking side of things. But here we've got a smaller micro brand company in Singapore trying to make a dial. They've chosen the right approach in terms of manufacturing and keeping the cost down. A typical dial made in uh, the traditional way is going to cost a lot more. So how do you get that into somebody's hands at a lower price point? Well, you use you computerize, you know, a CNC machine to make those dials. Still, the enameling takes some sophistication in terms of the manufacturing and the process. So kudos to trying something different that you don't see too often that is then you can use a lot. You can use any color for this, right? There's reds, greens, blues. It's hard to get those tints just right whenever it comes to, let's say, repetitive manufacturing, particularly when it comes to enamel. Now, Etienne is a new brand. They have this one model, the T01, which comes in the two colors, emerald green and ruby red. They might have more in the future. My guess is that's if this goes okay. This is meant to be a dress style watch, obviously. It's fairly thin. It's not got a huge diameter to it. It's on this black leather strap. Also, the simplicity of only having two hands, hour and minute. Even though this has an ETA 2824 in it, They've removed the seconds hand just to keep the simple factor on point. The case has a nice average diameter, 40 millimeter. It's got a nice round style to it. It's tapered down the sides. So it's got a nice dress, sleek, polished look about it. You can see there's polishing on all the surfaces. There's no brushing on this, polished the whole way around. The height is 10 millimeter from case back to top of crystal. And so slides under the cuff, meant to look good with a suit, that sort of thing. The lug to lugs 46.65 is what I measured. So about 46 and a half millimeter on lug to lug. Wraps and fits nicely on most wrists. There's not too sharp of a point to the lug design. That's always a potential issue whenever you're looking at a watch. Is lug width is 20 millimeters, so fits a lot of different straps that you're going to have sitting around if you're a watch person. Weight a light 72.5 grams. The case is 316L stainless steel and the crystal, I put it on my crystal tester. It is sapphire, not a crazy high end one, but it is sapphire. It's flat, which helps add to the slim look of the watch from case back to case height since it's a flat crystal, not double domed or something like that. Case back is solid. So they're not showing off the movement in this. It still has the sticker on it, so that's why it looks a little bit funny there. They've got a little etching about this. It gives you the water resistance, reminding you it's a Swiss movement, automatic, sapphire crystal, just basic information. Interesting that there's no branding anywhere on this watch. I think that's worth noting. Not on the case back here at all. On the front, it is a logo-less, uh, unbranded watch. Some people might like that. They find that a pro. Some people might be like, I kind of want to know what the brand is somewhere on this. I mean, nothing on the crown, nothing on the dial, nothing on the case back. So that's something that could be a pro or con, depending on what type of person you are or collector you are. The way the case back is attached is with screws. So don't go mucking with that unless you know what you're doing. Crown is just a regular crown. So not screw down. We just start turning. We get winding and then pull out for time setting. The water resistance, as you saw in the case back, is three ATM, so about 30 meters, 100 feet. Not a watch you're gonna wanna get wet. Let me throw out the price here real quick. This is currently 1,388 US dollars. So just about 1,400 bucks. That's a very significant price point for 
a new brand that is trying to come out to market, there are so many watches between $1,000 and $2,000. I mean, a lot of micro brands are under the $1,000 or even $500 price point. So a significant cost if you were gonna go this route. Two big things I think make this watch a little bit different than some of the other micro brand stuff that's out there or what they're trying to achieve. One, they're starting with a dress watch, not a dive watch. So, okay, that's commendable because there's just too many dive watches out there right now and pilot style watches is like okay in terms of what's coming out on the market i think dress style watches are going to start seeing an uptick we're starting to see a little bit of that already maybe i hope i want more variety uh the, there's just too much of the same stuff out there right now which is why i review some of these unique more unique watches because i think it's it's just good to see something out of the ordinary but anyway a lot of micro brands that are in that sub 1000 or 500 bucks give or take area they're using NH35, 36 type movements, Miyota movements. So really Seiko, Miyota, or in maybe some really ones that are stretching a little bit, maybe uh, SW movements, Soleta. But what we have here is an, an ETA or ETA, however you want to say it, 2824-2. So workhorse movement of sort of entry level Swiss watchmaking. They went for that higher end movement compared to some of the other things that are out there in the micro brand space. So again, a little bit of a the stretch there compared to what you would typically see. I didn't crack the case back open. My guess is it's the standard grade. I didn't see anywhere on the site where it mentioned the grade used. They're essentially the four grade standard Elibor top chronometer, but it's got an ETA 2824. The complications on this, it's just time only. So you can see they don't even have the seconds hand in use. And since they chose a 2824, that means this has a date under the hood. And so there's a ghost position. You pull out to uh, the first position for time setting and you can quick set. You can hear the date clicking uh, through underneath of the dial. So that's the thing. You know, I've talked about the ghost position before. What I don't understand is why this dress style watch, this isn't one you're going to probably put on every day, uh, typically. I don't know why they went with a 2824. Like if you're going to go with the ETA movement, then why not get the 2801? Get a nice, simple, high quality hand wound movement that just has a seconds hand and then you don't put a seconds hand on the watch. Why pay for a more expensive movement that has then the ghost position? I, I don't get that particular decision. I think that's a, a drawback. That's a beat rate of 2088, you know, four hertz, about 30 hours of power reserve. I do wish those ETA. 2024s had a little more power reserve. There's some better options out there beyond that. And some people just want the simple two-hand look, and that's okay, particularly on a dress watch. You just want a, a close estimate. If you're in an event, you're not spending a lot of time looking at your watch, I guess, unless you're one of those people that hop off into one of the groups of like just a few people and like, let's talk about watches. Like, what are you wearing? What you... The stuff I would do at an event. Thank you to my subscribers for being in a, at least a virtual corner with me, you know, nerding over watches. So yeah, thanks for that. And going back to the price again, okay, if I'm gonna splurge a little bit on something unique and different, you're not gonna run into someone else that has his watch. Um, just not gonna happen. So okay, that gives you one thing for price. Second thing is the dial manufacturing process, the analog. Okay, it has a Swiss movement in it which you don't see in a lot of micro brands. Okay, that's another thing. Something else, just subtle, but important, I think, is that they offer a two-year warranty. Most, almost every micro brand I've reviewed a watch on is a one-year warranty. So they tack on an extra year. And that says a little something for your money. Those are the sort of things that are worth considering looking at this sort of watch. No loom on this watch, just trusting those Lance hands that have a little bit of a beveling to them so that it reflects light. It, it, again, it looks so different in pictures and online versus what it looks like in person. And the strap it comes with is a full grain, genuine leather. This is black. As for the cons on this watch, I think one of the things that stuck out to me as I read the copy, and I had to clarify it by emailing back and forth with uh, the owner of the brand, was I think the terminology on the website's a little bit uh, conflated in terms of you've got CNC being discussed and Guilloche and Felinke. It's like 
okay, well, what's the actual manufacturing process for this dial? And you gotta kind of sift through the weeds a little bit to kind of get to the reality of that. I wish it was a little bit more explicit into what the process is, because I think that would help people connect a little bit better with the actual design and what you're getting. Just be aware what it is and what it isn't. And hopefully the earlier part of my video, the beginning, where I talked about that terminology a little bit, will clarify some of that for you if you were to be considering this watch. There's the two styles. They sent me the green. Uh, it was a little bit darker than I expected. And I, it, yeah, it depends on light a little bit, but I was thinking, and when I look at the picture and then I see it when I take my own pictures, or I look at it on my wrist, it's it's darker than you might think if you're looking at the website pics. This always comes down to all the pictures you see on watch websites are of these like stock photos or renderings. It's very different than a real world picture that's on someone's wrist, which is why I think it's important. I kind of mentioned in the intro, it's like I see it so often on so many other watch channels. It's like these people talking about watches and they're putting stock photos up. Like one, they don't have actual photos of the watch because they've never handled the watch, but they're they're giving their views on the watch. It's like, oh, okay, anyway. A little bit darker than I might have liked. I think I would probably like the red better, And I, but then I also have the same question is, if I saw the red and what I see on the website, it's probably also a little bit darker. Now they are selling these watches. This isn't just a prototype, but notice, perhaps you've noticed throughout the video, there are a couple specs in here. Those aren't on the top of the crystal or anything. Those are inside the case. They're either on the surface of the dial, or the inside of the crystal. So the QC needs to maybe up that a little bit. The point here is the dial. The dial's the star of the show. If I paid $1,400 for a watch and I get it and the dial's the star of the show and there are specs inside the case, well, that, that ruins the whole deal for me. You gotta have the QC in terms of things inside the, the case spot on because that's a make or break deal in this situation. So watch for that, whether you're the one making it or you're the one buying it. Uh, you want something that's crisp, clean, and doesn't have any dust particles. You know, anything that would interfere with the look of that dial. But at the end of the day, one of the things I discovered over this past year, because I had a Christopher Ward uh, C5 Slimline Green, which is a very limited edition of 100 pieces, also had a nice little hand-wound ETA movement in it, is that a mostly green, solid green dial dress watch with a black leather strap is just not me, not my style. Um, there's a lot of other things I like. I like dress watches, but this particular combination is not me or something I would get. I just sold, not long before the filming of this video, that Christopher Ward C5 Slimline green because I just, it wasn't getting worn. And as I had this, even in for review, and I'm, I'm wearing it around a little bit, I'm like, I, I want to put something else on my wrist. Maybe it's because I'm more of a casual environment sort of a person. So if I was doing a lot of dress up, you know, gala events and stuff like that, having some watches around like this would be good to have unique and different and stylish sort of options. But I guess that's just not my world. And so this has limited use, I would say. And that should go into consideration in terms of the collection that you're building. Is is this something that you're going to be wearing and using on a regular basis? For me, green dial watches with black leather straps in that dress category just are not it. Now, that's just my own personal situation. Everyone's going to be a little bit different. Some people are going to connect with this and have good use for it. Um, just not me in my own world. I might also note this does have a quick release strap on it. So yeah, I, it's not my style, but it's certainly going to probably be somebody's style. It's nice to see something different though, so I have to give that credit where credit is due. If I was asked, am I going to buy one of these? The answer would be no, because it's just not me. A last minute pro con, I think the hand design choice is correct. I think it's good for this watch. It matches the overall aesthetic very well, but the interior chapter ring I'm not sure does. That's something I would be looking at several options at a little bit more. It's got the minute track there, so you can have some sort of sense, but I think some of these dress style watches, it's not what you're going for, I don't think. It does match with the, the black and dark parts of the Guilloche style and look, but at the same time, there's nothing else white. And so all you got in terms of white is this printing on the chapter ring. 
I don't know that that looks really good. I, I think that might be a potential area for improvement. Maybe just forego that, make the dial a little bit bigger, or maybe put in a chapter ring that's contrasting in some way, or that just blends in the background, maybe it's all black. I'd, I'd want to see visually different options for that for making a decision if this is really the way to go or not. So those are potential pro-con for people, the interior chapter ring, but I think the hands are the right choice for this style watch. So end of the video, end of the day, is it a watch I would recommend? You know, I, I do say things that I like and dislike about watches. I think almost every single watch has pros and cons. About the nearest perfect I've gotten so far for me is the CWC63. And, and I have some nice watches. But the thing is, I, I don't like telling people what they should or shouldn't like. Some people are going to like this. Some people aren't. The mostly green dial, black strap dress watch is not my particular style so i wouldn't buy one myself but i think the design and the materials and just the whole package deal will appeal to someone and some subset of watch collectors enthusiasts people into micro brands it's, it's got some unique characteristics we've discussed and it's got some things that you should you know stop and think you know is this really what i want it's that simple so if you like it, you like it. If you don't, you don't. Thanks for joining me here at Watch Complications. Again, in the description below, you'll find links to my website, watchcomplications.com, and my Instagram. But for now, and I guess so far and going forward, I'm Brian. I'm out.